Congressman Jamie Raskin has finally announced his decision on whether or not he'll run for the U.S. Senate. He released a statement saying, quote, At this moment, I believe the best way for me to make the greatest difference in American politics in 2024 and beyond is this, to run for re-election to the House of Representatives in Maryland's extraordinary 8th District, and to mobilize thousands of Democracy Summer Fellows and raise millions of dollars in everyone's spirit to fortify and build up the Democratic majorities in the House and Senate, and to go anywhere in America where President Biden, Democratic Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, and other Americans asked me to go to campaign for a runaway victory for the party of democracy, freedom, justice, and progress, and to become the chairman of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee in a Democratic Congress, working to use our resources to guarantee the rights and freedoms of the people, to secure the integrity of every branch of government, to expose and root out corruption, waste, and violation of the Constitution and our ethics laws, and to mentor and support the remarkable junior members I have worked to assemble on our committee over this past Congress as our ranking member, and to spread constitutional literacy and understanding throughout America by teaching a nationwide online constitutional law class to anyone who wants to join me and to build a democratic party that will not only defeat the kleptocrats and theocrats at home but the autocrats abroad and will effectively confront the overarching challenges of our time climate emergency the aggressive spread of disinformation and propaganda the erosion of the rule of law and the uncontrolled rise of artificial intelligence which can become either an instrument of progress for our people or a power tool of the dictators and bullies and look of course his answer is just the peak of eloquence and frankly it's hard to argue against anything that Jamie Raskin says but I know that still people will be disappointed because it's hard not to want to see him continue to succeed and grow his profile. With that said, I think that within that paragraph, we already got our answer as to why. He mentioned the chairmanship of the House Oversight Committee. Obviously, chairing a committee is only something he'd be able to do given his seniority in the House. And if he were to start over in the Senate, he wouldn't have that option. And he wouldn't have it at a time when his voice is needed more than ever. In fact, in that same statement, he would go on also to say, quote, if I had two political careers, I would gladly give one of them to the year and a half campaign for the Senate, a prospect that remains alluring to me because of my profound love for our state and the incredible people who live here. I would even be open to restarting my political career as Senator number 99 or 100 at the bottom of a new institution. But I have a different and more urgent calling right now, and I cannot walk away from the center of this fight in the people's house and in the country. We are still in the fight of our lives, the fight for democracy and freedom and for the survival of humanity. And so while it's natural that we'd want to see Jamie Raskin promoted, I think it's reasonable to assume that it's preferable to see him in a position where he is such an outsized voice in Congress as opposed to effectively being a silent member of the Senate. By the way, one added bonus is that because we usually see the more extreme members in the House versus the Senate, it does give Jamie Raskin the unique opportunity to be able to shut down those extremists in Congress, including Lauren Boebert, Kevin McCarthy, and Jim Comer. I wanted to make a, just a brief semantic point because the general lady was making a, gram, a grammatical error that I heard some of her colleagues make before. Um, I believe she referred to a Democrat solution. I heard another member talk about a Democrat member and a Democrat plan. I just wanted to educate our distinguished colleagues that Democrat is the noun. When you use it as an adjective, you say the Democratic member or the Democratic solution or the Democratic plan. And so I assume it's a good faith grammatical error the first few times. But after people are corrected several times and they continue to say it, it seems like it's an act of incivility. As if every time we mentioned the other party, it just came out with a kind of political speech impediment like, oh, the Banana Republican Party, as if we were to say that every time we mentioned the Banana Republican member or the Banana Republican plan or the Banana Republican conference. But we wouldn't do that. So out of pure political courtesy, when it's an adjective, refer to the Democratic congresswoman or the Democratic member. Now, having said that, I'd like to uh, say that I favor the Boebert Amendment. I think it's really the Raskin Amendment because none of them apparently caught the fact that their reporting requirement wasn't to be published until I told them. I actually read the bill and I said, you know, there's no publication of it. So this amendment follows through on the fact that I pointed out to them that they, their bill didn't even call for publication of the inflation information, which they thought was so essential. And then he joins um, uh, the chorus denouncing crime in Washington, D.C., which is suddenly of concern to them. I had not heard them mention that before. Well, it turns out that Bakersfield, California, has one of the highest crime rates in America, recently described as one of the top 10 deadliest cities in America for its size, and its crime rate is higher than that of Washington, D.C. I'm pretty sure we haven't had a carjacking in my congressional district in several years. 
if someone thought about carjacking uh, a vehicle in my district, probably wouldn't end well for them. If you Google uh, carjacking in Kentucky, what will come up is just a few months ago, two people were carjacked in different incidents uh, at gunpoint in Louisville, which I think is in the state of Kentucky. And since we're talking about state laws, that's what should be relevant. So carjacking is obviously a problem across the country. And I'm not going to lie. I don't think I'll ever get tired of watching Jamie Raskin shut down the worst the GOP has to offer. And look, let's not also pretend that this is the final decision that he'll ever make with regard to his political career. I think probably of every person in the United States Congress that Jamie Raskin has shown an ability to persevere. Think about what he's endured in just the last few years. He lost his son, then immediately took on the responsibility of leading Trump's impeachment, and then battled and beat cancer. There is no planet on which the congressman can be accused of not answering the call. If anything, his decision here is another indication of that, given that he'll be a lot busier as oversight chair than he would be as a junior senator from an already deep blue state. There's also his response to this question from one of our recent interviews, which I think speaks for itself. You know, people would be really upset if I didn't ask this next question, and uh, I don't know that I'm going to get an answer to it, but would you ever consider running for president? Um, you know, first of all, I, I'm psyched that people saw with Joe Biden in the 2022 elections uh, what a good job he's been doing. I think there's a lot of ageism in people's dismissal of Joe Biden when you look at the actual concrete accomplishments his administration has had. Um, but the truth is, Brian, that uh, I have no bloodlust to run for president of the United States or any office um, at this point. But um, I would do anything uh, to get us through the darkness of this period. And uh, it's hard for me to believe that I would be the strongest candidate uh, for the Democrats. But if I were and people were able to convince me of that, I would definitely consider it. Um, but I think there's some great people out there who, you know, seem to seem to be engaged with the possibility. But um, ne never say never. All, you know, all of us need to be um, engaged in any way that we're needed in this moment. All of which is to say Raskin isn't closing the door on anything. So again, while it's a bit disappointing on his face that he won't be running for the Senate, the fact is that he'll continue to be more than visible in the House, where, as we've come to see, we are in desperate need of crusaders for democracy. And more than anyone else, that is exactly what Jamie Raskin is. So we'll be beyond lucky to have him run for re-election in the House and continue to serve as a voice for Democrats, not just in Maryland's 8th, but across the entire country. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.